Hi, my name is Matt Phillippe, and this is a demo on how to connect Microsoft Power BI to an Azure Data Lake store. You can find me on LinkedIn at Matt Phillippe, CPA and Business Intelligence Architect. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me there. Also, I'm out on YouTube. If you got to YouTube, search my name, you'll find a channel here. Several videos, demos, Power BI Data Connectors, AWS, Tableau Data Connectors, Google Cloud, and Azure. Really pretty simple architecture here. Data set at UCI Machine Learning Repository using the Azure Data Lake Store and Power BI for the analytics. Real quickly on the Azure Data Lake Store, if I go out to Bing here or Google if you want, uh, search Azure Data Lake, Azure Blob Storage, you'll get a, a nice summary here on the difference here. So the big difference here that I can see is, is Azure Data Lake Store is in fact a hierarchical file system, whereas Blob Storage uh, as an object store with the flat namespace, even though you probably can have folders in Azure Blob Storage like in S3, it's not a real folder structure. It's just a namespace, whereas this is a hierarchical file system. And you can see down here, Web HDFS Hadoop file system. There's going to be eight steps. We're going to download a data set from UCI Machine Learning Repository. We're going to launch the Azure Data Lake Store. We're going to upload the data set to the ADL store. We're going to connect Power BI to that store. We're going to edit the query. We're going to add a column. Then we're going to create a visualization. Then we'll delete the resource group to stop paying for the resources. Warning, uh, we're going to use some cloud services. So it's your job to understand that. I won't necessarily be using security best practices and uh, cost management best practices. So it's your job to understand that um, if you're going to use cloud services. Step one, let's go out and get the data set that we're going to work with. So I'm going to go out to Edge, not the Edge from YouTube, but Edge the browser. And uh, I'm going to try to use as much Microsoft stuff here as I can. So rather than using Chrome or Google, I will use Edge and I'll use Bing. So search UCI Machine Learning Beijing PM. 2.5, you should see this. So I'm going to down, go here, uh, 2.5 data set. So I'm going to go to the data folder and I'm going to download PS, PRSA data 2010 through 2014 CSV. There, so download it. Step two, we're going to launch an Azure Data Lake store. So I am logged into Azure. I'm at the dashboard. You can always click in the upper left hand corner to get the dashboard. Then I'm going to go over here to the plus sign. And I'm going to put data lake store. That'll bring me to here. I'll put create. Service name, so I'm pretty sure this is a global na or universal namespace, so it needs to be unique. So I'm just going to call this Power BI ADL demo. Give me the check saying it's good. Okay, I'm going to create a newer resource group Power BI ADL demo. And as I always say in Azure, I really like the resource group feature. It really makes it easy to delete all your resources when you're done. Location East US 2. There's actually only three locations for this service right now. So we'll just stick with East US 2, pay as you go. Pin to the dashboard. Create. I'm going to put the clock. Start the clock. Stopwatch. And I will pause the video as it deploys. Okay, super fast, less than a minute. Step three, time to upload the Beijing PM 2.5 data set. So we're in our data lake store here, data explorer, and click on upload and go here to select the file. I don't know why it defaults here, but here's the PRSA underscore data 2010 through 2014 open. Add selected files, progress, done, uploaded.
Step four, we're going to connect Power BI to the Azure Data Lake store. So before I do this, I am have Power BI desktop open. We need to check the version here. So I'm going to go to File, Help, About. I am using July 2017, 64-bit. Uh, uh, if you have previous versions, this the connector from the Azure Data Lake store may not be exact, but this connector is up, up to date as of July 2017. So if you have issues, uh, you may want to update to a more current version, at least July 2017. So I'm going to close. Connect to data, get data, more. Scroll down here. Azure Data Lake Store, connect. It's gonna ask for a URL. So this is interesting. So back in Azure here, and you can click right here to go to the, the Data Lake Store, the Power BI ADL demo Data Lake Store that I have here, or you can go back out here and then go back into your Data Lake Store. So uh, you can actually use the ADL and I'm gonna use that, but I believe that the connector here is just gonna convert it to uh, HTTPS. Uh, I think it's uh, a REST API. So you could probably use the HTTPS right here, but you can also use the ADL. So we're gonna do that. I'm gonna hit okay. And then it's going to ask me for my login credentials for my Azure account. So I'm going to pause it while I do that. I'm going to click connect, sign in, and then I'll pause while I enter my credentials. Okay, you are currently signed in. I'm going to hit connect. Binary. I'm going to say load. And then it should load my data. If I go back to the table right here, go down to the data table, and you can see right there, everything's set up and ready to go. Step five, we're going to use Edit Query to actually import the data from the binary column. Uh, if, as you can see, there's no data here. So we're in the data here. Content, we need to go out to Edit Queries. And then in this column where it says Content, you'll see Binary. All you have to do is click that. And then it will download the data from the Azure Data Lake store. You can see a CSV file. Okay, one other thing here. So the data is downloaded. Uh, I'm just going to go to transform here. I'm going to put use the first row as the headers. And then there we have our data downloaded. Step six, we're going to add a date column. Uh, we need a date for our visualization. So the parts are here, but we don't actually have the date. So I want to go over to add column here. Go to custom column. I'm going to change the column name to date. I'm going to put in year, and then an ampersand to help concatenate, and then another ampersand, month, then an ampersand, then another, okay, day. Okay. Doot, doot, doot. That should be good. So take note of that. Okay, there we have a date right there. And then I can actually change this into a date column. Sorry, it's gonna be back here. Call it a date. Okay, so you can see right here, I added the custom and then I changed the type here to date. So now we have a date we can use in the visualization. Step seven, we're going to create the visualization. Okay. So we just created our custom column here and then changed the date format and do a date. So it's now ANSI compliant. One other thing we want to do here, since we're going to be working with the temp column, the temperature column, it's in text. So I highlighted that column and then I want to make sure it's a whole number. Okay. And now it's ready to be used as a measure. So I'm going to go up here. So this is good. Whole number for this column. Nice date column here. Now we can do some biz. So we're going to go to file, close and apply. Okay. Now we're back to our date. So I'm going to go up to the report here. Okay. I'm going to click date. Okay. 
then it's going to give me the hierarchy here. So I just want year and month. So I just X'd out year and date, leaving me quarter and month. I want a line chart right here. I want to bring this down quarter and month. And then I'm going to click on the temp. Okay. So values temp, and then I'm going to click maximum. So it's going to show me the maximum temp. I'm going to take the same one and drag it over again. Okay. I'm going to, this time I'm going to do min. I could have created measures and done functions, but pretty simple here. I'll make this a little larger here. We can go into format, data colors. I'm going to do the max as red, hot. I'm going to do the min as blue. Okay. And then, so now we can start to see here. Okay. So the, what this is, is this is five years of temperature readings in Beijing, China. And then for a given month, we can see the max temp in the last five years, which was 11 degrees Celsius and the min was minus 19 in the middle of the summer in July the max temp got up to 41 and the min over the last five years for the month of July was 18 so pretty interesting this okay last but not least now that we're done with our visualization just taking a look at five years with the temperatures data from Beijing and Figuring out the max temp and a min temp for a given month over five years. So now we're done. And so we're going to delete this resource group so we can stop paying for the data lake. To be honest, I think data lake charges probably, it's a storage charge. So relative to other things, doesn't cost a lot, but it uh, depends on how much data you have in there. Um, we're talking, you can have petabytes. This is a tiny file. So nevertheless, I'm going to delete it. So I'm going to go to the resource group. And I really like the resource group because it uh, makes it really easy to delete a lot of resources. Sometimes when you launch a VM or uh, like a Hadoop cluster, you can end up with a lot of different resources in here. Um, and you can delete them all at once. In this particular case, this resource group only has one resource, uh, the ADL store. So I'm just going to hit delete. It says, be careful. BI ADL demo delete and then now it's deleting so you can see delete that concludes the demo on how to connect Power BI to the Azure Data Lake store as you can see it's a pretty simple architecture uh, obviously it's really powerful this is kind of an HDFS type uh, it has a file hierarchy but you can store it says petabytes of data on there so um, Really simple, but uh, really powerful. Again, uh, you can find me on LinkedIn, CPM Business Intelligence. If you send me a connection request, just please tell me how you found me, kind of what you do, and I'll ping, ping you back, telling you a little bit about myself. And on YouTube, uh, if you like it, uh, go ahead and subscribe. And thank you for watching.